Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. The more she writes, the more hearts uh, she wins. She's by far one of the best fiction crafters this country has ever seen. A journalist by profession, Cape Tonian Lauren Bierkes, is known for her short fiction pieces, which has been published in various publications, while her five books have all taken on lives of their own, earning her various awards, among them the Exclusive Book Reader's Choice Award, the University of Johannesburg Prize, and the Impact Dublin Literary Award, to mention a few. Personally, I think she will end up being one of the country's biggest literary exports. Today, the on-point storyteller, that is Lauren Bierkes, is a young creative we are celebrating, and she joins us from our Seapoint studio. Lauren, good morning. Fancy talking to you again. Hey, Sam. I know. I keep cropping up. I'm sorry. Uh, let's talk about this habit of writing and more than anything, finding <laughs> stories that resonate with your readers. Why writing? Because I found out that you get paid to make up stuff for a living. It seemed like the most incredible job. When I was five years old, I found out that that was a real career. And I was like, from that time, I was like, that's what I'm doing. It's going to be amazing. Finding the stories is easy. You trip over them in the street. But it's the actual writing that's hard. It's sitting behind a computer with the imaginary people in your head for hours and hours and hours and days and months. And it's quite lonely. <laughs> but there's something else that you do that, um, and I think a lot of other writers have their own processes, but you're one of those people that you, for example, in Shining Girls, you spend time walking the streets of uh, your... Um, the, of the killer, of the serial killer. Um, you spend time, you emerge yourself into the characters in what they would actually go through, walking the actual streets. That, for me, is an interesting process. I do a lot of research. Um, I'm an ex-journalist, so I know that the best stories come from real life and that they're more surprising and more inventive than anything you could make up. So for my new book that I'm researching at the moment, I've just been to Haiti, and I spent a week in Haiti, which was completely insane and amazing. And the kind of disparities you see here in South African society are magnified to the power of 10 there. Mm. As a creative, you're also known now in the industry for kind of passing on that, that skill and, and kind of your knowledge base to other um, authors like Charlie Human, for example. Why is it so important for you to not only develop yourself, but also create that, that path for other, for other writers, especially the ones that you find very interesting? And I can only remember back when we had our conversation, you talked about how big Charlie is going to be eventually. I think Charlie is, and, and we have some other amazing writers coming up. What inspires me is that we have such incredible talent in South Africa. And I still meet people who say, well, I don't read South African fiction because it's not very good. And it drives me crazy because some of our authors are just phenomenal. You know, and I, th I can think of some like Tando Mkolazana, uh, Spiwa Mahala, Yuwanda Omotoso, Diane Aberbach, uh, Henrietta Rose Innes, Charlie Human. There's an upcoming writer coming out next year, Sam Wilson. And I'm seeing this just amazing range of young writers who are doing really challenging, interesting, great storytelling. And, and they're definitely world class. I know that word gets overused, but they are. This focus for us, of course, uh, we call it young creatives, but I think what it sometimes uh, underestimates the amount of work that's been put in by these young creatives that we highlight. Just talk to me very quickly about your personal journey because there's writing and then there's this love for passing that on to other authors and then there's flying the flag high for South Africa because one of the, your books, The Shining Girls, has been signed up by Leonardo DiCaprio. That's right. Um, and Broken Monsters has been signed up by Scott Avasano, who made uh, Safe House with Denzel Washington. So it's really amazing to have this kind of attention. But the thing about being in the spotlight is that it's light, and you can share light. And it's very easy to just shine a light on someone else. And I try and do that on my website, where I highlight new and upcoming books by South African and African authors. And it's just because I'm inspired by everything which is coming out. But it is, it is a tough road. It's... People look at my success and they think that it was an overnight success. But you know what? It was a 10-year overnight success. Mm. And I've wanted to be a writer since I was five years old. And it's only taken me 30 years, now 33 years, to get to the point where I can do that for a living. 
We often think of writers as, as people that are not uh, successful, but you're, you're slowly breaking the mold and exposing that other side, almost bridging the gap between South Africa and America in terms of that uh, uh, transfer of content with Leonardo now um, signing, uh, signing for Shining Girls and Broken Monsters, also being picked up by an American production house. Um, what does that say about how the rest of the world is looking at uh, African authors? I mean, it's not the only, you're not the only uh, um, successful author that has had some of their works picked up, but there seems to be a curiosity at the moment with um, South African authors, African authors. I think we're kind of exploding in the world right now, from Neil Blomkamp and Trevor Noah to, um, you know, musicians like Spook Matambo. I think there's an interest in, in African voices and South African voices because we come from this very strange place of being first world and third world, um, of having the way we use technology, but also like this kind of, you know, our tabloid headlines about uh, the tokolosh under my bed. So it's, it's this wonderful combination, and I think we're so rich as a culture. The things which happen here are strange and amazing, and I think they export very well. What do awards mean to a successful writer? Um, it's a pat on the back from your peers. It's, and, and of course, awards can be life-changing. When I won the Arthur C. Clarke Award for Zoo City, that changed my career overnight. My book was about to go out of print. Um, I didn't have a contract for anything else. And suddenly, I was on the world stage. I was in the spotlight. And my agent said to me, you've got the spotlight. You better tap dance for your life. <laughs> so I think, I think that's also the thing, is, is, is luck is, is an opportunity that you grab onto. Who, who do you attribute to as the biggest cheerleader in your life? The person who's been behind you, motivating you and saying, you know what, Lauren, you can do this. <laughs> my ex-husband. <laughs> um, my agent has been really amazing. I've got an incredible circle of friends, um, including my ex. My family have been incredibly supportive. My dad uh, always encouraged me to write. He paid for me to do, study at UCT. And my mom always, you know, ensured that I used my imagination, that storytelling was absolutely central to our lives and who I was. If you were not a writer, um, uh, mm -hmm. obviously taking, being aware of the fact that you were a journalist before, but if you weren't a writer, what else would Lauren be doing? I think I would be a detective. I would like to be a detective. <laughs> I think I might be too soft-hearted uh, to deal with horrendous crime, but I'd really like to think that I would be able to apply my mind using those kind of journalistic in instincts and putting a story together, I, I, that would be really fun. But I might also have just been watching too much of The Wire. <laughs> I think so. When is the next book coming out? Uh, it'll probably only be 2017. It, it's a big one and it requires a lot of research and I'm not saying anything about it. It's top secret. But I have a comic coming out later this year, which will be really cool, with DC Comics. And w what is that going to be focusing on very quickly? I can't say, um, but I can okay. say that I have a Wonder Woman comic that's out right now, and it's set in Soweto. Okay, so there's a lot on your table at the moment. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us from our Cape Town studios. That so much, uh, is Lauren Bierkes, who's the award-winning author behind Maverick, Extraordinary Woman from South Africa's Past. That was published in 2005, Moxieland in 2008, Zoo City in 2010, The Shining Girls, that was picked up by Leonardo DiCaprio in 2013, and Broken Monsters, which was picked up by another American production house in 2014. She's our young creative here on Morning Live. Let us know what you think. Morning Live at SBC.ca. We're taking Thank you.